This is a recording to go over a chemistry mold test that we did in class uh, to help students understand it a little bit better. So on the front side, we only did a couple of questions, and we'll take a look at those right now, and then we'll just go through everything. First of all, determine the molar mass of aspirin, C9H8O4. Now, of course, we're taking the mass of nine carbons here, eight hydrogens, and four oxygens. Just adding those up and getting 180.16 grams. Okay, simple enough. Then how many molecules of aspirin are in 2.75 moles of aspirin? So we start with 2.75 moles of aspirin, and we just multiply it by Avogadro's number uh, per one mole of aspirin. And that's the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And we get an answer of 1.66 times 10 to the 24th. Okay, so that's just a quick mole conversion, okay, into molecules. Okay, now what about grams? Now, grams is going to require three steps. So we've got this many molecules of aspirin. First thing we got to do is get it into moles. So I'm going to do 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 23rd. I'm going to multiply that by one mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then I'm going to times that by 180.16 grams of aspirin per one mole. Okay, and that will get me from moles out the grams of 296 uh, grams of uh, aspirin. And actually, that's just a, a Texas two step, right? That's not three steps. So, again, first step, you got to get in the moles and then multiply it again by molar mass to get into grams. Okay, so that's our front side there, mole conversions. Now, let's go to the next side. This is a simulation that we did in class. We have to calculate the formula for a hydrate. You've got the crucible that gets recorded first, and then you add nickel nitrate with some hydrate. So that means there's water molecules on it, and that's 30.28 grams. And then you heat it for a while, and you get a final mass, so 29.25 grams. Okay, so what's going on here? The difference between these two is water leaving as you heat. So to calculate the grams of water, I'm just going to subtract those two. 30.28 grams minus 29.25, and that gives me 1.03 oh, grams of water. Okay, so simple enough. So what's left over? Well, what's left over is our uh, nickel nitrate, which is our hydrate here, without water on it. So how do I calculate that? I'm going to take my final mass. I'll subtract the mass of just the crucible, so 29.25 minus 26.78. And that gives me 2.47 grams of nickel nitrate, which is our compound without water at all. And that's what's still left in the crucible that does not evaporate away. So what we need to do is an empirical formula determination. First of all, I do need to get the molar mass of water. So that's two hydrogens and one oxygen added together. Uh, we're pretty used to that one. That's just 18.015. We also will need to get the molar mass of nickel nitrate. So that's one nickel, two nitrogens, and six oxygens. We add all those masses up and get 182.701. So in an empirical formula, what do we do? We take the grams of water divided by molar mass of water. That gives us moles, 0.05717. Take the 2.47 grams of nickel nitrate divided by 182.701. That gets us moles of nickel nitrate. Now remember, we're doing this in chart form. We're not actually doing it in the sewing all the units for them. So what we do now for all empirical formulas is we're going to divide the least number of moles into all the other moles. So that's the least is 0.01352, and that's moles of nickel nitrate. I'm going to divide it by itself to get one. I'll take my moles of water and divide it also by the nickel nitrate moles and get a whole number four. So what does that mean? Well, that means our formula for the hydrate is nickel nitrate dot 4H2O. And the dot means there's four waters coordinated to the nickel nitrate crystal lattice. So that's how you do empirical formulas for hydrates using experimental data. All right, let's continue. Now we're just doing percent compositions. Okay, percent composition, we're going to take the part divided by the whole. So the first one, determine the percent composition of water in the following. Well, we have tin chloride with four waters. So what do I do? I get the mass of four waters. That's four times 18.0152, and that gives me 72.06 grams of water. Now remember, 18.015 is two hydrogens and one oxygen added together. Now what do I do? I get the molar mass of tin chloride. Now, tin is 118.71. 
plus four chlorines. Chlorine is 35.45, and I get 260.51. Now I want the percent water. So I'm going to divide the water's mass divided by both of them added together times by 100, because I want how much of water is of the total. And that's 21.67% water. So that's how that's done. So again, the grams of water divided by the grams of water plus the grams of the tin chloride. So I want the part divided by the whole. All right, calculate the percent composition for the following compound. Now I want all of them. So I want the percent calcium, the percent bromine, and percent oxygen. So what do I do? I get the mass of one calcium. That's right here. Two bromines. Two times 79.904 is this number here, 159.808. I'm going to get the mass of six oxygens, and that's 95.996. I'm going to get the total mass, so I add all of those together and get 295.88 grams. Now, what am I going to do? To get percent calcium, I'm going to take the calcium's mass divided by the total times 100. Percent bromine, you get the picture here, is 159.808 over the total. Percent oxygen is 95.996 over the total. Notice how we multiply by 100 each time to get each of those in percents. So notice how it's the part over the whole for each of those atoms that are inside that compound. And that's called determining the percent composition. All right, now we're just going to finish up with some empirical formulas and molecular formulas. So here we go. A compound is 33.88% copper, 14.94% nitrogen, and 51.18% oxygen. What am I going to do? Remember, if I take a sample size of 100, all of those percents are actually grams then. So I'm going to take each of those grams, I'm going to divide them by their atomic masses from the periodic table, and that'll get me moles. So 33.88 divided by copper's mass, 14.94 divided by nitrogen's mass, 51.18 divided by oxygen's mass. So that gives me moles for all of them. Now this is an empirical formula, so what do I do? I take the least moles and divide them into all the larger moles. So I take it divided by itself and get 1. The 1.0667 divided by that gives me 2. And the 3.1989 divided by that gives me 6. So my formula is CuN2O6. And if you can recognize that as copper nitrate, it would be actually copper 2 nitrate, uh, you can write it in this form too. This is acceptable right here too as well. But maybe you can recognize that this is a polyatomic ion NO3. Okay, next. We're going to determine the empirical formula for the compound cholesterol. Okay, so here's our each of our percentages. We're going to do identical what we did there. Take a sample size of 100. Thus, each of those are grams. Divide each by their atomic masses from the periodic table. That'll get moles for each of them. I'm going to divide the least moles into all the larger. So I divide this one into itself and get 1. This one divided by that will give me 46. And this one divided by the same lowest moles gives me 27. So cholesterol has an empirical formula of C27H46O. A little bit larger than what you're used to, but cholesterol is an organic compound and is much larger than we normally have. All right, now the last one. This one is an empirical and molecular formula. So here's our compound, 75.46% carbon, 4.43% hydrogen, 20.10% oxygen. So what do we do? Remember, take a sample size of 100, and all of these are going to be grams then. I divide each of those by their atomic masses from the periodic table, and I get these moles here, 6.283, 4.3948, and 1.2563. Now what am I going to do? I'll divide the least into all of the larger ones. So this one divided by itself becomes 1. This one divided and that gives me three and a half. Do not round that. That half is there for a reason. And this one gives me five. So my empirical is C5 H3.50. Okay, now we cannot have three and a half atoms. So I got to think of a whole number. I need to multiply this whole thing through by to make these whole numbers. That would be the number two. Two times five gives me 10. Two times three and a half gives me seven. Two times one gives me uh, two. This is the empirical formula, C10H7O2. Now this one's special because it's also a molecular formula we're asking to be finding here. It says its molar molecular mass is 318.32. So determine the empirical and molecular formula. So there's one extra step involved with this one. I'm going to determine the mass of my empirical formula. So that's 10 carbons, so 10 times 12.011, plus 7 hydrogens, 7 times 1.008, plus two oxygens, two times 15.999, and that gives me the number 159.164. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take that 
molecular mass, which is 318.32. I'm going to put that on the top. I will divide it by the empirical mass, and this time I get a whole number 2. What does that tell me to do? Well, the molecule must be twice as big as its empirical. So I'm going to take 2 times the C10H7O2 and get C20H14O4. Okay, and that's a great review of the test. Hopefully that helps you understand things much better. Let me know if there's anything else I can do to help.